Hello guys. In this video, we about your thyroid metabolic hormones. So to first start with this chapter, let's look at the anatomy. Like where our thyroid gland is present. So our thyroid gland is present below to your larynx and on each side, and it is anterior to your trachea. Now an important fact that it weighs 15 to 20 grams in adults, and as we all know that this thyroid gland secretes your major thyroid hormones, which is your T3. the triiodothyronine and your t4 which is thyroxine now out of all these secretions 93% of the secretions will be of t4 and 7% will be your t3 which is triiodothyronine now one important fact is that eventually all the thyroxine will be converted into your triiodothyronine and then be delivered to your tissues now if you can recall in the previous chapter we learned a hormone that controls the secretion of your thyroid gland this is your tsh your thyroid stimulating hormone which is released from your anterior pituitary gland once that is released that comes and acts on the thyroid gland to release these two hormones second your thyroid gland has structures known as your follicles so these are closed structures and within them they have a substance your colloid now the main constituent of this colloid is your thyroglobulin this is a glycoprotein and it contains your thyroid hormones so this is the place where your thyroid hormones are formed and they are eventually stored now the last your thyroid gland also has cells known as your c cells now these c cells secrete calcitonin and this is uh, important for the regulation of calcium which will be in the next chapter so now let's look at how these thyroid hormones are formed this diagram you can see over here this cell this is the whole process we'll break it into each stage and see finally how our t3 and t4 are getting secreted to start the most important thing that the formation of your thyroxine and your thyroid hormones requires your iodine we need as adults we need iodine 50 mg in the form of iodides per year or 1 mg per week remember we need them in the form of iodides now let's see how this works stage 1 you can see here this one this is where the first stage is happening which is the transport of iodides from the blood into your thyroid cells now this is aided by a transporter known as your nis This NIS is a sodium iodide symporter. That means it takes in one iodide along with two sodium ions into the cell, and it is present on your basolateral side. Let's clear the concept of basolateral and apical. This side over here is your apical side, and this side over here is your basolateral side. So your basolateral side is where you will have your blood capillaries, blood vessels. from which the iodides will come through the blood and they will enter the thyroid cells this is aided by your symporter your nis sodium iodide symporter now where do you think this symporter gets its energy from let's see above this symporter you have this nak atpase nak atpase concentration gradient and because of that na will come from outside to inside of the cell it will come from the blood to your thyroid cells so this is where your energy is getting generated next as you can see this nis transports iodide sodium that means a lot of iodides are here right a lot of them get accumulated so this mechanism is known as iodide trapping iodide is getting trapped right right within this cell it's getting trapped here so that is your iodide trapping this was the first stage now let's move on to the second stage in the second stage the iodide which comes inside is released out through the apical side into your follicle now on the up, again here guys here is your apical side here is your basolateral side so the iodide which comes you can see it is going out now which transporter helps in that a transporter known as pendrin 
if you can recall we just studied this transporter in our uh, chapter related to our kidneys and one of one more pendril is present in your inner ear but remember they transport different ions so this pendril present over here in your thyroid cell is a chloride iodide ion co-transporter that means it will take iodine outside and it will take chlorine inside so this is present on your apical side do not forget that this was your stage two moving on to stage three formation of your thyroglobulin and secretion so as you can see here your rough your er and your golgi uh, synthesize and secrete this thyroglobulin now this thyroglobulin inside th inside that you have 70 tyrosine amino acids and this is the major substrate to which your iodides your iodine will come, it will bind, and there will be a formation of your thyroid hormones. So let's revise. Step one over here, your iodides come in. Step two, with this, with the help of pendrin, they go out. And step three, your thyroglobulin is getting secreted and synthesized and also going outside. Now, let's go to stage four. In stage four, you have something known as oxidation of your iodide ion. That is nothing but the conversion of your iodide ion into nascent iodine or I3 minus. Now, why, why is this step important? Remember that when your iodine is in this form, then only it is capable of directly combining with tyrosine. If you remember, where did we see tyrosine? In your thyroglobulin, 70 tyrosine amino acids. So, as I said, this was the major substrate to which this iodine will bind only in the form of nascent iodine or I3. And for that, they need to undergo oxidation. So who is responsible for this? Your enzyme, your peroxidase and your hydrogen peroxide. You can see here, peroxidase and hydrogen peroxide, again, on your apical side, are responsible for this oxidation. One fact, if this peroxidase and if your hydrogen peroxide are inhibited, or if they're, let's say, absent due to some reason, there would be no formation of your thyroid hormones. Again, because only in this form, it is capable of combining directly with tyrosine. Okay, this was your fourth step. Let's move on. Stage five. In stage five, you have iodination of tyrosine. Now, when your iodine and your thyroglobulin molecule combine, that process is known as organification of thyroglobulin. And the enzyme responsible for that is your thyroid peroxidase. So basically what happens is your iodine over here, they undergo iodination and coupling with this thyroglobulin, with the tyrosine inside. So if you see, this stage has many things. So let's go to stage six. There are successive stages in iodination of tyrosine. If you refer to this diagram over here, this is also in our textbook. This shows when iodine and tyrosine combine, what all happens? The major product. So out of this, we can see that the major product formed is your T4, your thyroxine right here, and your T3, which is your triiodothyronine. These are the major products. Now, when this whole process is happening, one more molecule known as your reverse T3, your RT3 is also getting formed. But this does not have any functional significance in your humans, but it is formed. Now, when this whole process is happening and your thyroid hormones are getting formed, where are they stored? Let's see. Now, they are stored in your thyroglobulin molecule. So if you see this as a thyroglobulin molecule, in that you will have T3, T4, T3. You'll have 30 T4s and you will have a few T3s. Now, this is stored in your follicles. And this, the supply is enough to, for two or three months. When the whole thing is there, when your hormones are generated, enough supply is there to supply your body for two to three months. So, this was the stage five. A quick recap. Stage one, your iodine, iodide comes inside. Stage two, through the apical side, it goes out with the help of pendrin. Stage three, your thyroglobulin is getting secreted out. Stage four, your iodine is getting oxidized because it is only capable to combine with tyrosine in that form, in the nascent iodine form. Your stage five, 
is your iodination and coupling which has a series of events and the main hormones produced are your thyroxine and triiodothyronine so this was stage 5 and stage 6 now stage 7 the final stage after your hormones are formed they should also be released right so this stage is your release of t3 and t4 as we said before your thyroglobulin molecule has t3 t4 like this now remember this whole molecule will won't go into the circulation so you cannot expect this thyroglobulin to go into your blood vessels at your basolateral side instead what happens is it comes inside by pinocytosis and it is acted out upon various proteases which further degrade the thyroglobulin molecule and your t3 and t4 are released as individual so they are freely released over here now the second step which uh, on which uh, your t3 and t4 is getting released is some of this thyroglobulin comes inside through your endocytosis bind in to your a protein known as your megalin now in this diagram you do not have megalin but you can google it and you can find out about it so this megalin your thyroglobulin and this megalin bound to each other move through the cell by transcytosis to the basolateral side and therefore that causes the release of your t3 and t4 so this is a very important step because your thyroid hormones are formed but they should also be released right so this is the step where they get released over here through your basolateral side this was stage 7 now stage 8 as you can see here you can see one more arrow coming up here right so this is stage 8 which is your iodine recycling now remember 3/4 of the tyrosine remains as monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine let's go back to the flow chart it remains as monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine means it does not get converted into your thyroid hormones now that is acted upon by your diiodinase enzyme this enzyme your diiodinase enzyme it removes the iodide from it as you can see here and therefore uh, your iodine comes back and this process is your iodine recycling your iodine went all the way through like this and it again came back it got recycled it again came back by the action of your diiodinase enzyme again one important fact if this enzyme is absent or if it is inhibited by something you will have iodine deficiency it is logical because you won't have iodine therefore your body will require more because it's not getting recycled and you will have an iodine deficiency so this was stage 8 a quick recap stage 1 coming in stage 2 right here when it is getting uh, out from your apical side stage 3 your thyroglobulin stage 4 your oxidation stage 5 your iodination and coupling in stage 6 it is coming in stage 7 uh, also uh, the process happens and stage 8 finally your iodine is getting recycled so this was the whole process of iodine uh, the formation of your thyroid hormones now now we know which side has which uh, transporters what enzyme does it use we are clear about that now let's look at some substances which suppress your thyroid secretion these substances are known as your anti thyroid substances we have three the first one is your thiocyanate the second one is your propyl thiouracil and your third one is your inorganic iodides these three have different forms of mechanism and we should know where they are acting let's start with thiocyanate now thiocyanate ions these are these can also tra uh, transport through your blood and if in your body you have more number of thiocyanate ions what that can do is they can also enter through this nis importer you remember this nis importer takes inside sodium and iodides so what will happen is if there are more thiocyanate ions it will there will be a competitive inhibition so instead of iodide going inside a lot of thiocyanate ions will go inside therefore you will have less iodides inside therefore no formation of your thyroid and suppress thyroid secretion we saw before also how important your iodides are for the formation so this was the mechanism your thiocyanate ions give competitive inhibition right here because they can enter through this uh, transporter second 
propyl thiouracil this uh, this molecule it will inhibit your peroxidase enzyme therefore there will be no iodination and no coupling if that process is not happening all your major products of your thyroid hormones won't be formed so this was the action of your propyl thiouracil third your inorganic iodides now it is important to remember that when there are more inorganic iodides in your plasma the activity of the thyroid gland is decreased now the second mechanism by which this inorganic iodides act is it will inhibit it will prevent the endocytosis of your colloid we saw that for the release of the thyroid hormones they have to come in they have to be acted upon by proteases and then be released so the process of endocytosis is inhibited so therefore there will be no hormone secretion into the blood so this was the mechanism of all three antithyroid substances so that's it guys i hope you guys uh, learned and this was all about your whole thyroid hormone mechanism and some antithyroid substances which suppress your thyroid secretion thank you